Hey guys, it's Eagle, and welcome back to Technological Journey. Today, we've got a lot of work to do, so let's get right into it. And with the help of our new and improved AE Auto Crafting setup with all these HP machines, this shouldn't be too bad, right? Wow, wow, wow. Well, that was a lot of work. For such a small portion of our quest book, too. And we're not done yet. We still have to use this mixer to make ourselves some haste alloy and ingots, which is what we're going to need to make ourselves a nuclear reactor. We're getting close. We're getting close. We will have it done by the end of this episode. I promise. We will have this thing built one way or another. There's a few things we got to set up in preparation for that, even still. But. Man, <laughs> we are close. Before we move on, I think we're going to solve another problem that many, many, many of you have talked about. And that's, why haven't I made the battery tower? You know, that's a great question. So let's just go ahead and do that. I already have the main block built. We have some other things we got to collect before we can actually build that thing. But while we're doing it, let's go ahead and get these hastily and get smelted in our blast furnace. We made 50 dust, so let's go ahead and make that start so moved it over there and it's in the ebf so you look at the battery tower here are the things we're going to need this is what the block looks like it's a five by five multi-block and it looks sick so we need 48 of these low friction talonite casings a maintenance hatch 36 hv power cells more on that in a minute and 64 borosilicate reinforced glass now if i'm not mistaken we should have everything we need for this. I think it omits adding the input hatches and output hatches for the power, but we can build those too. But what I want to do actually is rather than build the HV power cell version, I think I want to make the EV one so we don't have to worry about transforming anything because this is going to allow us to actually be able to keep this thing on and not turn it off whenever we uh, aren't using it and wasting benzene. So... This should allow that power to actually go somewhere and then we can pull from that. And where do I want to put that? I thought of a really cool spot for it. Just off this room here, I made a room directly into our cooling tower and it fits perfectly inside of here. So this is where this battery tower is going to be. I made a little spot for it. It's just going to sit pretty well in the center of our new expansions of our base. So all the stuff that's going to take immense power is all kind of sitting around here. So I think that's where we're gonna put that. So let's go ahead and see what ingredients we do have already prepped. I think I did most of this. Um, and if you missed it, I did a lot of this stuff on stream um, with the help of some great viewers. They helped me figure out exactly all the things that I was going to need for this battery tower. And wow, the Talonite, that was a process to get, but we have a good amount of it now, which is nice. Um, I think theoretically we can't expand this if we need to, so that's nice. 
for silicate glass. Have a good amount of that as well. Um, yeah, so that's good. I think we need 64. Um, yeah, we do. And then the last thing we need is these HV power cells, which were not easy to craft, but we did make them. So let's go ahead and put that in there and complete the quest. But we're not going to use these. We're actually going to make the EV versions, which are right here. So we need 36 of those. And it looks like we have a lot of stuff that we're going to need, such as magnesium. We're going to need a lot of chlorine and a lot of titanium. Um, not too bad. It just looks like it's a lot of titanium. We have the nitrogen. We should have the carbon. Chlorine might be a bit of an issue, but we can solve that pretty quickly. So give me a second to, I guess, craft up all the titanium is the main thing we need uh, so that we can make this. 36 EV power cells. That took so much longer than I expected it to. But we have them. We have the 36 EV power cells. Wow, these things look sick. Each one of these is capable of storing 8 billion power. So let's go ahead and build this battery tower. I already built pretty much everything except for these. And all we gotta do is fill this thing in. Hopefully, hopefully it turns into a multi-block. I added the EV energy input hatches. I added a four. Um, four amp EV hatch. I'm sure we'll have to add more once we get more of those um, turbines up and running, but let's fill this thing up. This looks insane. This is gonna look so cool. Good, I was a little worried we didn't have enough. My math was wrong, but thankfully <laughs> we did it right. And then hopefully we should see this get built. Oh, let's go, cool. But what's the total power? Uh, we can't see it yet. Uh, we need some tape, we need some duct tape. We're gonna need some more of this stuff. Boom. Total energy capacity, 288 billion EU. Wow, that's awesome. Well, I guess the first thing I wanna do is hook this thing up to our power. Um, what's gonna be the best way to do that? Let's Let's figure this out. Um, it'll be nice to have superconductor cables going from this to that, so there's no loss. But for right now, I think we might just come straight out the back here. What does this look like in terms of entry? Yes, yeah, so you want to go in like right there. So maybe we just run it down this way. There's, there's no good way to do this with where this is situated at. And hopefully we have enough of these cables. Uh, let's break in, break in right here. Build this across. Okay. I know this is not ideal, but for right now, I'm not worried about the power loss because it's just gonna be filling a buffer anyway. It's better than losing power from turning it off and on or having it running and not doing anything. So I'm willing to take that hit. Okay. Back in here. Let's see. Yep, everything looks good here. Good, now we just gotta see if the battery tower is getting filled up once we put this thing in. Plug it all the way in. How does it line up? It should be lined up perfectly. We getting any power? Oh, we sure are. Let's go, this thing is awesome. 4,040 is what our EU per tick input is. But I have a feeling this thing's gonna fill up faster than we think. Maybe these can be expanded to a better, a better capacity, but this thing is awesome. It'll give us a nice buffer of power that we can pull from um, to hopefully have our machines have no downtime because of the power. I also added a four amp output hatch on this side. Um, obviously that would probably be changed alongside the input hatch, but wow, very cool. Just another multi-block goal of today. In keeping with the theme of making more multi-blocks, it's finally, finally time for us to build ourselves a nuclear reactor. So let's go ahead and do it. What else do we need? It looks like we need one more EV machine hole. And we should have everything we need. I already went ahead and prepped all the other blocks required. Let's grab ourselves the reactor. Boom, nuclear reactor. Cool, let's go. Let's complete this quest, get ourselves some more rare earth. And let's see here. All we need now 
is to build this thing. I also pinned some quests for these down here. This is going to be a way that can uh, produce a little bit more power. And it's going to be perfect because we're going to build this thing right below our battery tower. So let's go ahead and let's get after it. So let's put this talent out of way. We need this, this. Bunch of different things. We'll keep the output buses in here for now. But let's hop right into it. Finally, I can put this room, uh, this room to use down here. Did a little bit more decorating. Made ourselves a little balcony. We can put some more multi-blocks up there. We have a way to get here. Just a little another staircase off shooting off of that one. And this is going to be super cool. So I have a spot planned out for it right here. This is where we're going to build this thing. So let's hop right in. First thing we're going to do is actually place the reactor block, which is going to sit right here. So let's go ahead and place that. Let's get our freedom wrench out. Maybe that'll help us a little bit more. Boom. Okay. Very nice. You can put this in the back. Energy input hatch. Very nice. And now we just got to build a little bit. Keep those. Builds all the way up to the top. Very, very cool. This thing's going to be sick in this room. Glad we made this, uh, this room taller <laughs> because I uh, I wasn't really sure how tall this was going to be. So those ones in the top will be for the other buses. Should be fairly close. Let's grab ourselves the hatches now. Let's see. So they want the input output for the items up there. We can put the input and output for the fluids if we need them up here. Very cool. I really love putting that super tank in my inventory. And we want to put the output here. Input on this side. And I think all that's left is to build this thing out. Let's check this one more time. Layer by layer. Starting from the top, we're good. Okay, so we need to put another shielded reactor. And then we put the natural thorium casings, I believe, here in the middle. So let's go ahead and do that. Nice. Cool, and I think we just gotta fill the rest of this up with glass and the rest of these casings. And we should have this thing nice and built. This is a cool looking multi-block. Awesome. Now we gotta fill more silicate glass. Nice. Ooh, okay. <laughs> and hopefully this thing should build. What am I missing? There we go. Just had to switch around those output hatches. But here we go. This thing is crazy looking. Awesome. But we're not done with making this room something very special. I'm not going to hook this thing up to power just quite yet because we got a little bit of building that I want to get done. You can see I've marked out some stuff here in the walls and such. I think it's time we uh, make this thing look pretty cool.
<laughs> this is awesome. This is so, so cool. It's turned out so much better than I was hoping. Even added some cool big fans up here. Wow, this turned out amazing. And basically the effect that I was trying to go after here is something that actually happens in real life at, uh, at nuclear reactors. And this is called Sharonkov radiation. And essentially, if you guys aren't familiar, what this is, is what happens when electrically charged particles that are coming off the reactor um, travel faster than light in water or, or another clear medium. So that's what produces this, this, this blue color. But I think it's perfectly themed for this build. And I'm just imagining how much cooler this would be if we had some kind of emissive texture coming off the reactor. But wow, this, this is probably one of my favorite things, if not my favorite thing that I've ever built in this world. And it's the things like this that really make you want to get on the world and play every time you log in. So super, super cool. If you guys have any other ideas for things that I can build that are like this or ways that I can make this particular build better, uh, go ahead and leave a comment. I'm always open to make this thing look a little cooler. So yeah, we did a little touch up here, but this room is really starting to come along. It's really starting to come along. I'm super excited about it. And with the creation of this nuclear reactor, it needs some supporting cast. We have a few more machines that we're gonna have to build. Uh, first off, with the heat exchanger and the hot coolant turbine. The hot coolant turbine is awesome. It's gonna allow us to make some extra power um, along with some of the heat that we're creating. There's just, I'm not really sure how to implement these yet um, in terms of this whole loop, but it, it's good that we can at least build them and we will do that and then we'll work on trying to implement the logistics part of that um, right after. So let's figure out exactly what we need for this bad boy. We do need a couple more maintenance hatches. I know that's not, I didn't make those. So let's head back. We got to make a couple more maintenance hatches. I don't know if... I don't know if the heat exchanger needs one necessarily, but um, I don't know if the heat exchanger needs one necessarily, but we should be able to do this anyway. Okay, what are we missing? Um, I oh, I don't know why I'm using this. I thought I had this set up for, I thought I had this set up to autocraft. Let me check that. I don't, but I think that's because I don't have a circuit set up in it. So let's just turn this to 21 real quick. Just a quick second to make ourselves the maintenance hatch. Okay, we can switch those out. It was on zero before. We have our maintenance hatch. Okay, so those are the things we're going to need. How is this thing built? Is it very similar to our other turbine? It looks as though it is on the side still. So we need all of these things down here. It's gonna function very similarly to our gas turbine, except it's gonna use the hot coolant. Okay, now where do we wanna put this? I think these will produce, uh, it needs cooling and heat. I think that's what's coming out of these parts of the reactor. I did move them to the other side because I wanna put the uh, coolant turbine here and yeah, we'll put it right in the middle just so we can get the outputs on one side yeah let's do that so this will be the front or do we want it on the other side let's see yeah because we're gonna probably want well it's gonna go underneath it's, it's gonna go underneath so it's okay here put that here main attach on the side it's the rotor holder we don't need that yet we should just be able to build this thing out. This is in the middle. Put the rotor holder on this side. Energy hatch will go there in the back. And then we'll have the output hatch and input hatch. Energy hatch on this side. And this should be the completed multi-block. Do I have this going the wrong way? Hmm, I wonder what we still need to build this. Let's see. What am I missing? Is this going the wrong way, perhaps? I wouldn't think that would affect it. Rotor holders on that side. Oh, I have these switched. 
I have these switched. That should fix it. Let's hope. So we want the output on this side. Probably should switch those. Yeah, let's do that. So that this way we can have it just go straight up into the battery buffer. That on that side. Plus, I want to be able to see this rotor when we come in and out of the building. Do we like this yet? We still don't like this. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. I'm not sure. I'm not sure what's going on with this with this bad boy. Rotor holder, energy outputs. It should be able to be used anywhere. Do these need specific these don't need specific hatches? Huh. I'm unsure as to why this doesn't want to work. Do we have our freedom wrench anywhere? Because I'm confused. Did I have it backwards the whole time? Or is it one longer than I'm expecting? Let's go layer by layer and make sure we build this thing correctly. I've never done this before. I'm kind of just trying to show you guys the process of this sometimes. It can get a little bit confusing. It can get a little bit confusing. Okay, so the bottom layer just needs more of this. Ah, uh, okay, so I did it. I thought I had it right the first time. Well, now I'm really confused. Output input. This is the output hatch. Rotor holders on this side. Maintenance hatches on this side. And it should just be casings on top. There we go. Well, I'm not sure what I did wrong. I probably built it right the first time, but <laughs> whatever. It's working now. Cool. So we can have the stuff coming up through the floor here or through the wall even if we wanted to. And this works out well. I did have this backwards. I wanted to have the rotor on this side just so the cable can go into that. We'll fix that. But now we know how to build it. We can, uh, <laughs> we can fix it from here. Okay, cool. Along with that, we're also going to need to make the heat exchanger which I think is a little bit easier to make in terms of its complexity. But to do that, it did the quest did require us to make two of each of the IV input and uh, output hatches. So that's interesting. Let's see, where does this main block need to be? So we have the inputs in the front, outputs on the side. Okay, so inputs on the front, this is gonna be a three by three. We can put it here. Let's check the chunk alignment. Yeah, that would've been right in the middle of it. So let's do it right here. So inputs in the front and the heat exchanger and the outputs on the side. And then in theory, we just gotta fill this bad boy in. I don't know if it needs It might need a muffler hatch. Huh. Oh, it built. I'm an idiot. It built. It just took a second. Okay. Okay. That's probably what happened the first time when I built that one. All right. Now we have the heat exchanger built. Now, the heat exchanger is really cool because we can put lava and water into it and it'll create uh, steam from that. So. My plan to get lava is I have our basic pump that we use in the beginning of the game and we're going to set up an ender tank um, to this and uh, <laughs> have lava going directly into that bad boy. 
once we get this thing set up. I'm gonna use the solar panel that we got. We can make another one of these LV solar panels. And uh, yeah, so it shouldn't be too bad. So we have a little bit of a buffer I'm gonna add to it, so in a super tank. But I don't know if I want to fill this thing up yet. But essentially, I did a little bit more digging through the quest book. So we have this line completed. And this is where we actually start the processing of these different elements. So basically, I took a closer look at this. It's just going to go uranium to test and go all the way down through this uranium chain. And then we'll get to here. Basically, what this is saying is we'll have to do that same process with all these different elements to get the different um, fuels and oxides and all and waste and all that kind of stuff, which is going to be a long process. So I'm not sure how it's going to go. But in looking at that, there's a couple more multi-block machines that we're going to have to build, one of which we've already done, the cracker unit. So our cracker unit is just up there. Um, we're probably going to end up moving it into this room just because it makes more sense um, because everything is going to be kind of contained. The nuclear stuff is going to be contained in this room. And if we need to build another cracking unit for stuff that isn't nuclear, like we've been doing with the refinery gas, we can we can rebuild them. They're not too bad. Just a lot of stainless steel, which we can make we can make a good amount of at this point in the game. But the other thing that we need is the gas centrifuge, which again just takes more clean stainless steel. But this thing is interesting. It is a really really cool shape. Um, I don't know if we have the height that we're going to need in here to build that thing. Uh, let's let's double check that and see how. See how tall this thing is. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it's seven tall. How much space do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, well, we do have seven blocks of height in here. Um, but I don't know how the multi block is going to like it having the top touching it. It should be okay. But that will be super, super cool to do. Um, so, yeah. I think we got to figure out. I don't really know anything about how this is working. I don't even, I don't think for the first part of this, we even need the nuclear reactor. We don't need the actual reactor until we get into the actual uh, fuel oxides. Um, so all this stuff is, we don't need, we can just do regular chemistry with this stuff. The chemistry we will do. All we got to do is grab ourselves some uranium, which thankfully I have been processing a little bit. But let's go ahead and start collecting some green check marks. Firstly, uranium dust. We got a good amount of that. Cool. Uranium dust completed. Now we need uranium nitrite. Uranium nitrite you get in a chemical reactor with nitric acid. I don't know if we have any nitric acid. Uh, we have 32 buckets worth. That's not too bad. How much will that give us? Uh, a decent amount. A decent amount. We're just going to handcraft this uh, original just to kind of understand how it works. And at this, once we figure out how it works, we should be able to automate this when we do it. So I kind of want to put a pause on working with these multi-blocks right now because that's going to take a lot of research and trial and error and get it to work. I don't want you guys to sit through that. So maybe I'll gain a greater understanding of how that stuff works in between episodes. I'm planning on doing a stream in between this episode release or like after this episode releases. Um, and then that will surely go live on the channel. So... If you don't catch the episode up right away and you didn't catch the stream, you have a lot of content to watch. So let's go ahead and see if we have any more of the nitrite. We have the nitrite and uh, we really only get 48 of it. Is that all we could make from the 32 buckets? Okay, so we're going to have to make a nitric acid uh, set up for sure. Because I don't know how much this is going to even get us if we're even going to be able to continue to go with this. Okay, so we have the uranium nitrite now. Get that check mark. Now we need uranium dioxide. Uranium dioxide. Dioxide. Just the regular uranium dioxide. In a blast furnace? So we put this nitrite in the blast furnace. Interesting. I would not have expected that, but let's put it in. We don't have a great way to automate just put stuff in anymore. I'm still working on trying to automate this EBF, and I'm not having a great time. So if you have any comments or any suggestions on how I can yeah, more easily automate these EBFs or some things, uh, that would be very helpful. Um, right now, it can only do stuff that's just the um, just the dusts. It does not do well when we have fluids involved. So <laughs> not great in that regard. Okay, output hatches. We're going to have some 
We're going to have some stuff in here. I don't know if I even put it in these. Yeah, just a little bit. Uh, carbon dioxide. Oh, that's full. Oh, it probably only use this side. Okay. Nitric oxide. Nitric oxide. Cool. Now we need the dioxide. We only got 16, so it's getting smaller and smaller. You can see why we can need a lot of this stuff. Okay. Uranium dioxide. Completed. And now we need uranium hexachloride. Cool. Hexachloride. Uranium hexachloride. How do we make that? Take the uranium dioxide and some chlorine. Okay, that's not too bad. Let's grab ourselves some chlorine. We have a good amount of that. We know that already. Cool. Chemical reactor. Uranium dioxide and chlorine. And then let this thing go. Good thing we have a lot of time and our bottle built up. So we can help speed this thing on along just a little bit. Still not super fast though. Uh, okay. Interesting. So this is going to get us the hexachloride. What do we use the hexachloride for? We need hexafluoride. So we're going to need some hydrofluoric acid, which I'm going to be honest, I don't think we have. Fluor. We have two buckets worth. Oh, good. Because that's not even going to do one craft. How do we do this? We need hydrogen and fluorine. Do we have any fluorine? We don't. We actually had some bastnesite uh, that we could process down to get ourselves some fluorine. So we have a decent amount of it actually just lying around here in the base in, uh, in resource form. We're definitely going to need to get a larger supply of that is that is going to be useful in all of the processes we're going to be doing moving forward but like i said for right now this should be fine so we're going to start with making ourselves some hydrofluoric acid in the chemical reactor so let's put our fluorine in the chemical reactor boom and let's get some hydrogen hydrogen and that's going to make us some hydrofluoric really quickly too we'll speed it up even more Satisfying. Cool. Now we can grab the hydrofluoric. And from here, this is where we could put it back into a chemical reactor again with we with what we have. And we can watch this thing create ourselves some hexafluoride. Cool. Well, that didn't make too much. We need a lot of this hydrofluoric acid, which isn't too hard to make. We just need the fluorine. We can eventually automate that process at some point. But well, let's see. Now we have the hexafluoride. And this, the hexafluoride, so there's the different hexafluorides of all the different um, nuclear elements in this here, which is where we're going to start using these machines. But for right now, I think that's where we're going to leave off. I don't really have the stuff required to make these centrifuges yet. And I want to do some movement uh, around the base with our cracker unit put that down into the nuclear room it would give us some more space here as well to work with uh some more distillation towers or other things that we might have so i think that's where we're going to leave it but we finished off with a good amount of chemistry we we made a lot of progress here M many multi-blocks today many multi-blocks again and you know i love multi-blocks we even made some pretty cool base additions so super super cool um so yeah a lot of time went into making this episode guys a lot of resource gathering a lot of time processing things so if you did like the video, show your support, please hit the like button. And if you're excited to see me progress even further, uh, go ahead and subscribe. I really do appreciate it. It, uh, it. it gives me motivation to keep grinding. So very, very thankful for that. Um, but that's all I've got for you guys. It's been Eagle. Peace.